Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and my most popular React video by far is an introduction to MobX, but it's over two years old now. Um, and in React years, it's sort of like dog years, so two years is sort of like 20 years old in, in one sense. So we're doing a new video called An Introduction to MobX in 2020. And I know you're thinking it's 2019 still, but maybe you're watching this in 2020, but either way, it's sort of like when you're buying a car, you buy the 2020 model in 2019. And we're in December basically anyways, so let's go with it. So what I've got going on is an app where we are going to be tracking bugs. And that is a Create React app that's not got much going on right now. It's basically just an app component which is returning a main tag that says bugs. So the two packages I've installed and that we'll be working with today are MobX and MobX React. Uh, these are the versions I'm using, but I'm sure sort of anything around there uh, next year should probably be good enough to work with this. So let's get in here. So we've got MobX and that means we want to be managing some state because that's what it does. So the first thing we'll do is we will define a store where we can store our state inside. And a store does a couple things. It has both our uh, state properties, sort of the data that we're tracking, we're observing, and it also contains functions that will modify those state properties. And the way we'll define that is we will use the use local store function, which comes from MobX React, and we will pass a function to it. And this function should return an object. So I'm doing this sort of implicit return, and what is returning is this object. And we'll define one property on it called bugs, which for now will contain a centipede. You thought we were tracking actual computer bugs, but no, we are tracking insects. I messed up, called it a locale store. Okay, so we've got our store, but it's sort of just sitting out here outside of a component, and we wanna be able to use it in our component, but probably not just in this component, but in any um, of the hierarchy that we are going to define. So any of the children of children of children of this app component. And the way we're gonna tackle that is just by using React context that comes straight with React, no additional packages needed. So the first thing we are going to do is define our context. So we'll say, we'll call this the uh, store context, and we'll, we'll use the function react.createContext like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another component called a store provider that will basically be used to wrap around all of our components inside of this app we're building. So we will define a function called store provider like that. And it will, for now, the only thing it will receive are children components that it will wrap itself around. So now that we have this store provider component, we're gonna take this store that we defined up here, uh, sort of in the middle of nowhere, and we're gonna place it inside of our store provider. And if you haven't uh, worked much with context before, the way it works is you basically take your context, it has this thing called a provider, and you wrap that provider around children components, and you give it a value. And this value is the context value that's now going to be available, in any level of the component hierarchy. And you'll see how it works in a few minutes. So what we're going to be doing is returning, and we are going to use the store context dot provider, like that, and it will wrap itself around the children components. And the one prop you always need to provide to the provider is the value. And the value that this one will have is the store that we just defined here, which has our bugs array of uh, right now just a centipede. Okay, so now that we have our store provider, we need to take it and wrap it around basically the rest of our app, like this. So this means anything inside of here, anything inside of the store provider, gets passed as children up here, and those children will be placed inside of our store context provider whose uh, value is the MobX store that we've defined here. 
So let's try to, I guess the next step is how do we actually uh, access our store and display the bugs on the screen? So what we can do is we can define a new component and we'll call it the bugs list. And it will be a functional component. And inside of this bugs list, we need to access our store context. So the way that works is we can say const store equals react.useContext, which is a hook that allows you to access a context. And the context we are accessing is the store context up here. Cool. So now that we've done this, we have our store, and the store is the value that we defined up here on our context provider. So now we can render out our components, our, uh, our list of, of bugs. So we will return uh, an unordered list. And inside of this unordered list, we can take our store, access the bugs, and since it's just an array, we can map them. So as we map them, each one is a bug, and it will render out an li, a list item, which will display the bug. And we need to add a keys to keep React happy, just like this. So now we need to take our bugs list component and actually use it. So we'll place it inside of this main here, self-closing tag. And let's now check for the first time to see if I messed something up. All right, so I didn't, it's working so far. But that said, it's not complete. Uh, there's something missing that I'm going to be adding here. And that's basically the ability to observe changes to our store. Um, but Basically, the first time through, I want to do it a little bit incorrectly so you can see why we need to use this use observer hook. And, um, and you'll see why in a second. It won't be basically observing changes, so you'll always be stuck with centipede. So the next thing we want to do is let's build a little form to be able to add new bugs to our bugs list. So we'll call this the bugs form. And we will define this here. And our bugs form, uh, similarly, will need to access the store. And inside of here, we will return a form. OK, so the form will have the on submit event, which will be E. And we'll just say prevent default for now so that we don't actually submit this form anywhere. And inside of the form, we'll have an input of type text. And the value that this will have, we need to define some local state. So you don't need to put everything in MobX. You can still use just re your React local state with hooks. Basically, what you want to put in your MobX is your app state, stuff that's going to be shared sort of app-wide. So we will have our bug and our set bug function. And that will be react.useState. And we'll start a bug off as an empty string. So now we can come down here and set our input's value. And then we'll have to do the onChange event. And we will, for this, say setBug. And we will pass it the event target value. So the target would be this input. And the value would be whatever the user has typed in. OK, so we have our input. Let's put a button to submit this form. So type submit, and we'll say add, because we're adding a new bug. OK, so we've got this here, but it, it doesn't do anything yet. We haven't hooked it up to our store. So I'm going to go back up to the top where we defined our store here. And I'm going to add a new function. So I'm going to call this uh, add bug, and it will be a function which takes in a bug like this. And what it will do is it will access our store, the bugs, and it will just push this new bug onto it like that. So now that we have this function called add bug, receives a bug, pushes it onto our store.bugs, um, that's actually the first big difference you'll notice between, say, Redux or even when you're setting state. State in MobX is mutable, so you can just change it. And so you see here, I've accessed this array, and I'm just pushing a new value on. 
And MobX is basically smart enough to observe changes and that you're sort of, as you're mutating your underlying uh, arrays and objects and stuff like that, and keep track of the changes for you. So that's one nice advantage of working with MobX. So now that we have the add bug function, we'll come down here and we'll say store.addBug. And the bug we'll be adding is this bug that's in our state here. And I guess after we've added it to our store, we can reset our local state back to an empty string. So we will add a cricket. And you'll notice that I've saved it, but it didn't um, change this list at all. And that is because, as I mentioned, we have to observe changes to our store. And we do that using this useObserver function. And the way this works is you basically wrap this around. Okay, it's sort of easier if I start off from scratch. So I'm going to return useObserver. And what this is, it receives a function, and the function returns the, uh, the HTML to render out from this component. So instead of just returning this, we return this inside of this useObserver function. So now if we come back and we say cricket, nice. So it's adding it to our store using that store.bugs.push. And it's observing changes to the store and causing it to re-render this bugs list and show that we now have this. What else? We can add a grasshopper. So it's working. So the last um, thing I want to show is basically how to add computed properties. Or they're basically read-only or getter functions that will compute um, values derived from our state. So what I'm going to add, and that's maybe a mouthful, very confusing, so let's just show the example. I want a function that will turn, return to me how many bugs there are. It's a simple calculation, it's just dot length, but you can imagine maybe it's doing something a little bit more intense than that. So we will define uh, get, and we will call it the bugs count. And this is basically a function that will return a value. So the value it will return is the store.bugs.length, like that. And because it's a get, you don't actually have to call this function here. You basically just access it as if it were a property. So why don't we define another new component and we will put it above the list and we'll call it the bugs header. Oops. And it is also going to need access to the store. And it will return an observer. And what it will output is an H1 that says how many bugs there are. And then the word bugs. So what we'll do here is we'll say store dot bugs count. And remember, you do not have to do like this. You just access it as if it were a property. So we'll take our bugs header and we'll come down to our main app and we'll put that at the top. And now we'll come back. So one bugs is obviously not the most grammatically correct thing in the world, but as soon as we add a cricket, now it works. Cool. So what we've done is we've basically used MobX in a few ways. We here are just ask, accessing our state and uh, mapping over the array values and rendering them out. Uh, down here, we've built a form that we'll call a function that can mutate our state's value. So it's pushing new values onto our bugs array. And up here, we defined um, a get attribute or function that will return a, a computed value derived from our state to say how many bugs we have. Now, if we review the code here, um, maybe we can start at the top and work our way down. So we've defined some context and context is again, a way to provide values um, at any level of the component hierarchy. So you don't have to prop drill something down 10 levels. We've taken our context and we built ourselves a provider. And this provider basically wraps around our children components 
And in here, we also define our MobX store. So our store had uh, three things. It had our bugs property, which is an array. It had an add bug function, which will mutate this bugs property. And it had a computed value that will return some sort of calculation based on our, our state. So we took this store and we gave it as the value of our context provider so that it's available to all of the children uh, that it's wrapping around. So if we come down to the bottom, we took our store provider, we wrapped it around uh, main and inside main, we have a header, which uses that computed property, a list, which uh, maps over all the bugs and renders them out, and a form, which calls the add bug function to add bugs to it. So if we just review those quickly. In all of these, we're basically accessing uh, the store through the context. And anytime we need to observe changes to the store, we need to use this use observer hook, which receives a function and returns something to render. And in here we can say like store.bugs count. Down here we can say store.bugs.map to map over all of them. And down here in the form, we're not actually observing any changes to our state. We're just calling functions that will mutate our state. So we never had to use this um, use observer function, but we did still need to access our store so that we could call the add bug function, passing in a new bug to add. So that is how you use React in a hooks world, in a functional component world, and hopefully that will set you up good for 2020 using MobX to manage your state in your React apps. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye.